Hey there guys, it's John here at the Flick Pick channel and uh, before you guys start questioning why a grown man is sitting in his room um, talking about his favorite Disney movies, I have my reasons and uh, this is why. Um, basically, 20 years from now, I'm going to have a midlife crisis. It's going to happen, I can already predict it, I can see it. I'm going to be married to a uh, money-grubbing whore who uh, I'm going to have a few kids with, neither one of them are I don't even know if either, either one of them are going to be mine, to be honest with you. But either way, they're not going to love me. And uh, I'm going to resort to a, uh, a, I'm either going to go postal and uh, subsequently take a, uh, an AK-47 um, to my workplace. Or B, I'm going to um, take all my Disney movies, lock myself in my room um, with a lot of... Um, hard narcotics <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna watch all the Disney movies and that's basically what's gonna save my life so first up at number 10 it's Pinocchio <laughs> um, how do you buffer in what I just said to Pinocchio either way a story a magical story about a little wooden boy who just wants to be real and you know he's got a, a father who's basically not his real father he kind of just made a little wooden boy doll which is kind of you gotta question that you know what I mean you know, thinking about this movie, it makes me wish I was a real boy. One of the coolest concepts about this movie was Jiminy Crickets. Basically, a little grasshopper who sits on your shoulder and is basically, he acts as a conscience. And I don't have one of those, but I would really, I think that'd be useful. Let's go under the sea! That was my, that was my bad impression of a Jamaican crab man. Anyway, it's The Little Mermaid. And uh, The Little Mermaid... It did a lot for me in my youth days. Um, just look at those shells. Look at those purple shells. Uh, a red-headed chick who, um, once you put her on dry land, she can't get away from you. Get it? Because she doesn't have legs. Um, anyway, Ursula was a bitch, wasn't she? God. And uh, look at Ariel's father. Look at that guy. Look how buff he is. This is, this is not healthy. What I'm doing right now is not healthy. It needs to stop. It's a pathetic excuse of an existence, and I'm basically telling you about my my um, infatuations with a Disney character. But you know what? I have no shame. And speaking of not having any shame, it's uh, Mighty Ducks. That's right, Mighty Ducks comes in at number, what number are we on? 10, 9, 8. So Emilio Estevez comes in at number 8. And uh, it's hard to say that. It really is hard to say that. You know, hockey was really big in the in the 90s. Did anyone else notice that? Back in the 90s, they just kept making hockey movies. Was anybody really even into hockey in the 90s? I, I mean, I don't know. I thought I was. Anyway, I know the Bash Brothers didn't come till number two, but I always wanted to be one of the Bash Brothers. Um, that is, that's the truth. That is honestly the truth. I think, was there something else I wanted to say about this movie? Um, not really. I, I just... You know, as a kid, I could really never roller skate. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I had no balance. I could ride a bike pretty good, but I could not roller skate. <sighs> Next up, kind of one of the overlooked Disney movies. It's The Sword in the Stone. And uh, this has always been one of my childhood favorites. You know, it's got Merlin, the wizard. It's got Wart, the young boy, who becomes Arthur and, uh, you know, pulls the, the sword out of the stone, which would go along with the title of the movie, obviously. Anyway, one of the coolest scenes in this movie was when, what is her name, Madam, Madam something? I don't remember. Anyway, she looks like a meth head. Um, when her and Merlin were having that big battle and one turns into a dragon, the other one turns into something else, and then Merlin turns into a virus and gets, she becomes infected with him. Um, that doesn't, <laughs> that sounds weird. Take thee away into a land of malet. No, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's Hocus Pocus, starring Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker. And this was actually, Sarah Jessica Parker in this movie was slightly attractive. Call me crazy, because um, I know she kind of has a Rocky Denison thing going on nowadays, but the cat in this movie, the cat in this movie for 15 years, I thought his name was Zachary Binks. No, 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 no. It's Thackery Binks. Thackery. Coming at number five, it's a classic. It's The Lion King. And you know what? I always, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be Scar. You know, call him, listen, hear me out. Scar had it easy. You know, he didn't rule the Pride Lands, no, but he had the hyenas sucking up to him. He didn't have to do anything. He just kind of was like the brother of the king who got all the perks. 
You know, I mean, what was the problem there? I didn't get it. And the Lion King song, I don't know why. I can never reenact the Lion King song. I always go tone deaf. Let me let me try it here. Um, da, um, da, ye, da. That's, I'm not even trying to be funny. That is honestly me trying. Um, I think it's time to go to number four after that. Okay, you guys ready? I am. All right, so coming in at number four, it's... Pixar's The uh, Incredibles, and Pixar, Disney, same thing, right? Um, anyway, it's uh, a movie that they always should have made a sequel. Now, we didn't get a sequel to The Incredibles. No, we get Cars 2 with uh, Larry the Cable Guy. And I always really liked her. Uh, Bonnie, is her name Bonnie Hunter? Holly Hunter? Holly Hunter? Just go with me. It doesn't matter if I'm wrong or right. Just nod your head, please. Um, I always liked her lisp. Hey, gosh, Dash, what are you going to do? Coming in at number three, it's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And it's uh, starring Rick Moranis. And uh, basically, he builds a giant machine. He accidentally shrinks his own kids. Well, they shrink themselves. Let's be technical about it. And then they get lost in the backyard after he takes out the trash. Good job, Rick. So anyway, these kids go on this adventure through their backyard. And basically, they, they ride a giant ant. They eat out of a Twinkie. And... Uh, they also play, well, they sleep on a giant Lego. And when little Nicky was in his father's cereal, um, in the milk, I was, I always got grossed out. Like I couldn't eat cereal for a couple days once I thought of that. Cause I thought a dirty little Nicky who was just in the backyard dipped in his father's cereal. And it wasn't, I didn't, wasn't bothered by the fact that his father might eat him. I was bothered by the fact that all that dirt's in that milk now. But we're Andy's toys. Yeah, that was my Tom Hanks impression. I'm sorry. You guys want to see my Tim Allen impression? Get it? Tim Allen? Early 80s? Okay. Anyway, it's, uh, ha, ha, ha. There you go. Is that, that's for the, that's for the kids of today. Do you, do you guys get that one? Okay. Um, anyway, it's a Toy Story, a childhood classic. And this was just a movie. When I seen this in theaters back in 1995, I was just blown away. You know, the, not only because the CGI, it was just... Toys coming to life was always a weird infatuation I had as a kid. I always thought before this movie came out that my toys did come to life. So I was always, like, I'd play rough with them all day. But before I put them away, I was real nice. I was like, okay, you guys can sit here. You guys are going to sit there. And I always had, like, a hot, um, like, hot chick G.I. Joe, you know, with the big, hard plastic boobs. And I'd set her in front of the guys to make them happy. That way, when the toys did come to life at night, they didn't crawl up on my bed and, you know, stab me in the ear. How can you not like this movie? I've never understood how somebody couldn't like Toy Story. If you don't like Toy Story, let me know down below why you don't like it and at least give me at least a paragraph to two paragraphs why and give me reasons and tell me a little bit about your childhood. That might have a factor on that. Alrighty, and my favorite Disney movie of all time is I had, I sat there and I thought about it. I was like, which one really captured my imagination? What, what am I doing? What is this? What am I doing right now? And it was, uh, it was Aladdin. This is my favorite Disney movie of all time because you can't go wrong with Aladdin. It's just, it's the most entertaining movie there is. Um, you got, you know, Robin Williams as the genie. You got um, the one kid that was in, uh, I forget what he was in. It doesn't really matter. Was he in Growing Pains? I don't remember. Um, no, he wasn't. It doesn't matter who he was voiced by. Anyway, Jasmine looks like Kim Kardashian. And that's always fascinated me a little bit. And she had a tiger for a pet, Jafar. Jafar was a badass. You were born a street rat and you will die a street rat. The only thing to keep you company will be a fleas. Anyway, Aladdin was a pot-picketing thief who lived off the streets and he was scum. He was a dirty scum. He, uh, he stole. He seduced. But you know what? I guess it's okay because in the end, you get to live with a princess and you get three wishes. So you know what? That's the model of life. Cheat, kill, steal, rob. Um, and then, um, yeah, you end up in a palace with the sultans and uh, you get married to Kim Kardashian and uh, you have a, uh, a big blue friend. So anyway, guys, let me hear from you. Um, what's your favorite Disney movie? And don't just tell me the favorite Disney movie. Give me a few reasons why. Tell me what makes that your favorite Disney movie. Get get in depth. Get a little personal. It's okay. We're all friends here. Um, leave that down below. Anyway, until next time, I'll see ya. I need to come up with a better line for bye. Okay, bye.